let's consider propene propane separations. Most of the available um, adsorbents are selective to propene, and therefore the uh, desired propene product can only be recovered in the final vacuum blowdown stage. Here is a typical PSA scheme for uh, propene propane separations described in the paper by Khaligi. The five stages consist of pressurization followed by an adsorption cycle in which uh, propane is uh, removed from the, uh, the top of the column. The adsorption cycle is followed by a co-current high pressure purge with uh, propene in order to remove any adsorbed propane in the pores. This is followed by a co-current blowdown step and finally a counter-current vacuum blowdown is used to recover propane of the desired purity. The product purity is dictated strongly by the amount of propane that is still present in the void volume and in the pores in this final count current vacuum blowdown step. Therefore, it is important to have an adsorbent material that completely rejects propane into the gas phase and is highly selective to propane. One such material is shabazite, and that is the material also described in detail in this paper. Here's a structure of shabazite. Consists of one unit cell of shabazite has six cages. Each cage is uh, separated from an adjacent cage by narrow eight-ring windows. But the cage volume for shabazite is uh, slightly larger than for DDR zeolite, but significantly smaller than for for phagocyte. Shabazite zeolite suggested as an adsorbent uh, for propene-propane separations is a cage-type zeolite where adjacent cages are separated by windows which are 4.2 angstrom in this direction and 3.8 angstrom in this direction. Due to subtle differences in the bond angles and bond lengths between propene and propane, the ratio of diffusivity of propene to propane is uh, a few orders of magnitude high, as reported in this paper by Ruthven and Rias. And therefore, due to the high ratio of diffusivities, it is possible to construct a kinetic separation scheme for propene-propane separations. For kinetic separations to be effective, Diffusional influences uh, should be strong enough and the diffusional influences are dependent on the size of the crystals of uh, zeolite or moth that are embedded within the uh, adsorbent pellets that are packed into the fixed bed. I illustrate the influence of particle size and uh, in particular, the radius of the crystallites, R sub C, on uh, kinetic separations of 50-50 mixtures of propene and propane using shamosite zeolite. The fixed bed adsorber operates at a temperature of 353 Kelvin at a total pressure of two bars. For theoretical background, consult my paper published in ACS Omega 2019. The material I'm going to present today is a follow-up to my presentation titled Diffusional Time Constants and Contact Times that is uh, available for viewing on my YouTube channel. I consider a, a fixed bed adsorber with a length of uh, 0.3 meters 
and the voidage of the uh, pack bed is 0 0.4. The uh, superficial gas velocity at the inlet to the fixed bed is 8 millimeters per second. And the interstitial gas velocity, which is the superficial gas velocity divided by the uh, bed voidage, epsilon, is 20 millimeters per second. This yields a contact time between the gas mixture and the particles of 15 seconds. For uh, propane, propane diffusion inside the uh, crystals of uh, Shabbosite zeolite, the ratio of diffusivities of propane to propane is 5,000. And uh, to highlight the influence of uh, the size of the crystallites that are embedded within the catalyst pellets, I consider four different scenarios with four different uh, particle sizes which are increasing from A, B, C, and D. The uh, Instead of uh, focusing on the particle size, I uh, vary the uh, diffusional time constant for propene, which is the maxwell stefan diffusivity for propene, divided by the square of the uh, crystallite radius. And uh, in the first scenario, A, we have uh, D1 divided by RC squared of 6.8 times 10 minus 2 per second. This is reduced to uh, 1.7 times 10 minus 2 in this case, to 6.8 10 minus 4 in this case, and 1.7 10 minus 4 per second in this case. Increasing the particle size or the crystallite radius results in stronger diffusional influences as we move from A to B to C to D. And uh, the influence on the uh, component breakthroughs plotted on the uh, y-axis is the dimensionless ratios of the concentration exiting the uh, fixed bed adsorber divided by the inlet concentration ci divided by c or not and this is plotted as a function of a, a modified time parameter which is uh, q naught the flow rate of uh, the gas mixture the inlet in units of liters per second at the actual temperature, 353 Kelvin, and actual pressure, 2 bars. This Q0 flow rate value is multiplied by the time in seconds, divided by the uh, kilogram of um, zeolite, in this case shabbosite, that is packed inside the uh, fixed bed. This is a convenient modified time parameter. We note that with increasing diffusional resistances, the breakthrough of uh, the saturated alkane, C3H8, plotted in blue, occurs progressively at earlier times. And the uh, time interval between the breakthroughs of propane and Propene is larger. Now, earlier breakthroughs are beneficial for the five step uh, PSA scheme that I had described earlier because uh, the uh, saturated propane is, uh, partial, is uh, virtually excluded from the pores. And that is, uh, this is important in the achievement of high product purities. 
So the uh, important takeaway message from these simulations is that uh, for uh, kinetic separations to be uh, effective, we need to choose the particle size uh, carefully and uh, the diffusional influences should be strong enough to lead to large differences in breakthroughs times for propane and propene. There is another important factor that uh, determines the uh, strength of diffusional influences in uh, kinetic separations, and that is the contact time between the uh, gas mixture and the uh, zeolite or morph that is packed within the tube. I consider a set of four simulations for a fixed bed of length 0 0.3 meters in uh, um, this is the length of the packed bed, the bed voidage of 0 0.4 and the uh, the crystallite size is held constant such that the uh, diffusional time constant the for uh, propene, that is the uh, maxwell stefan diffusivity for propene divided by uh, the square of the crystallite radius is 1.7 10 minus 4 and the ratios of the diffusivity of propene to propane is uh, constant at 5000. By varying the uh, gas velocity at the inlet, we can um, examine the influence of uh, contact times on uh, the separations. I consider four scenarios, A, B, C, and D, wherein the uh, contact times are reduced from 30,000 seconds to 3,000 seconds, to 300 seconds, to 15 seconds. We note that uh, if the contact time is very large, then uh, the uh, separations are dictated by mixture absorption equilibrium and diffusional influences are of negligible importance. And uh, we see that uh, both the uh, components, propene and propane, break through at approximately the same time. As the contact time decreases, the uh, saturated propane breakthroughs breaks through earlier than the unsaturated propene. And with decreasing um, um, contact times, the breakthroughs of uh, C3H8 occurs progressively earlier, and the time interval between the breakthroughs of propane and propene is larger with decreasing contact times. So from these simulations, we conclude that the uh, choice of the uh, gas velocity or bed diameter is quite important in uh, kinetic separations and uh, the contact time for a given particle size needs to be short enough for diffusional influences to become um, effective and optimal. Watch also my previous presentation, Diffusional Time Constants and Contact Times on my YouTube channel. Having established the uh, separate influences of the uh, diffusional time constant and the contact time for separations of uh, propene-propane mixtures in a fixed bed packed with Shabbosite zeolite, let's proceed.
to examine the influences of uh, varying both the diffusion time constant and the contact time in such a way that the product of these two essentially important parameters are held constant at a value of 2.55 10 minus 3. The four sets of simulations with varying diffusional um, time constants and uh, contact times resulting in the product being the same in all four cases are shown here. The four sets of simulations collapse to yield a, a unique curve. So uh, this result is quite important from a practical point of view and allows the uh, scale up from laboratory sized units to commercial scale uh, fixed bed adsorbers and uh, the scale up um, methodology re should rely on the product of the diffusional time constant and the contact time being held the same in the laboratory unit and in the commercial fixed bed adsorber. If we do that, the diffusional influences will be uh, the same and uh, the uh, separation performance would also be the same in the laboratory and commercial units. For detailed background, I um, ask you to uh, refer to my uh, paper in this uh, new journal. It's an ACS journal and uh, this paper is uh, available online. Watch also my video presentation, Failure of the LDF Model for Kinetic Separations on my YouTube channel.